Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The New York Times claims we're having a global wildfire crisis. Worsening heat and dryness could lead to a 50% rise in off-the-charts fires, according to a United Nations report. And here's a report from Changing America, Shared Destiny, Shared Responsibility. 2020 sets new record for U.S. acreage burned in wildfires. Wildfires have burned through a total of 10.3 million acres so far in 2020. That breaks the previous record of 10.1 million acres set in 2015. That sounds really scary, except for the fact that it isn't true. According to the United States Forest Service, there's been many years with more than 10 million acres burned, including 1930 and 1931, when more than 50 million acres burned in the United States. This is a 1945 publication from the U.S. Forest Service. Every year, over 200,000 fires burn and sear the forests of the United States. Every year, an average of 31 million acres of forest land is burned over an area larger than the state of New York. Here's an article from the New York Times dated October 9, 1938. Forest fires, one every three minutes in 1937, burned almost 22 million acres. And they said that burn acreage in 1936 was almost double that in 1937. We can see this in the U.S. Forest Service graph. 22 million acres burned in 1937, and almost twice that burned in 1936. But the press claims that 10 million acres in 2020 was a record. Let's take a look now at how they created this fake news. When Joe Biden occupied the White House in January 2021, the National Interagency Fire Center showed burn acreage in the United States going back to the year 1926. But less than a month later in 2021, the Biden administration had deleted that data. And by March 2021, they redirected to this page, which didn't have any data before 1983. So what the Biden administration did was they deleted all of the inconvenient data before the record low year of 1983. This graph shows the complete data set through this year, with 2022 burn acreage being about one half of the long-term average. Burn acreage since the beginning of August has been second lowest of the last decade in the United States. This story of fraud by the press and Biden administration is pretty bad, but it gets much worse. As of Election Day 2020, this document was on the National Interagency Fire Center website. It showed that during the pre-industrial era, when carbon dioxide levels were very low in the atmosphere, typical burn acreage in the United States was around 145 million acres. But this year, there's been less than 7 million acres burned, which means that burn acreage is down 95% in the United States over the last few hundred years. This destroys the press and government narrative about wildfires getting worse, so the Biden administration did exactly what you'd expect them to do. By April of 2021, they had deleted that critically important information. And now that same web page includes this incredibly cynical comment. The National Interagency Fire Center is committed to making its information and communication technologies accessible to individuals with disabilities. They deleted critically important data for everybody and tried to cover it up with some gratuitous statements about people with handicaps. North America has had some incredibly bad forest fires in the past, with the deadliest ones occurring in October 1871. More than 3 million acres burned in Wisconsin and Michigan in a matter of two or three hours. Around 1,500 people died in those fires. The New York Times reported on October 3, 1871, prairies in flames, 150 miles swept by fire, men, women, and children fleeing for their lives, immense loss of property of all kinds. On October 7, 1871, the Chicago Tribune reported, The Great Fire is still raging with unabated fury. And the following day, on October 8, 1871, Chicago burned to the ground. The Chicago Fire was the most famous fire that day, but it wasn't the worst. 
Massive fires burned in Wisconsin and Michigan on October 8, 1871, killing around 1,500 people, with about 800 killed in Peshtigo, Wisconsin alone. As I mentioned earlier, the fires did most of their damage in about two hours, and people had no chance of escaping. On the night of October 8th through 9th, 1871, the fire destroyed in two hours a swath of forest 10 miles wide and 40 miles long, and obliterated the towns of Peshtigo and Brussels, killing about 1,500 people. Modern Americans have never experienced a fire of anywhere near that intensity. The press and U.S. government are constantly working to misinform the public about climate and energy. They want people to believe that the burning of fossil fuels is making fires worse, which is simply not true. They've demonstrated they're willing to go to great lengths to delete any information which contradicts their narrative. The government and press want people to believe that if they don't stop using fossil fuels, they're going to burn up and they're going to drown. They also want people to believe that sea level is rising because of the burning of fossil fuels. This is what the beach at La Jolla, California looked like in 1871, the same year when Peshtigo burned. Now let's take a look at how that beach has changed over the last 150 years. There's no indication that the water level has changed since 1871. In 1871, the Brisbane Courier reported on imaginary changes of climate. Three consecutive years of drought while they've stimulated the inventive resources of practical agriculturalists have had the natural effect of calling forth a plentiful crop of speculation from weather prophets and projectors and half-instructed meteorologists in all the philosophic tribe of a Laputan general to whom the periodical press now affords such fatal facilities. We've often noticed that in the tabular statements of those compilers of weather records who write to the Times, useful and welcome as their communications are, every season is sure to be extraordinary, almost every month one of the driest or wettest or windiest, coldest or hottest ever known. Much observation, which ought to correct a tendency to exaggerate, seems in some minds to have rather a tendency to increase it. Fake statistics and superstitions about climate are nothing new. What is new is the U.S. government using these fake statistics to destroy the energy security of the United States and the world. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this insanity for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Toki, and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.